Hello and welcome to a new edition of What's Up with Canines. Uh, I know it's been a while since I did a video presentation on some of the features of Canines. Uh, my plan this year is to do more, putting out short videos on tips, tricks, features, upcoming releases, things like that. So make sure you tune into the channel to see those if you find those useful. Okay. So today I wanted to show you one of the features coming up in V0.29.0 which is relating to running vulnerability scans on your clusters. So let's take a look. If I go in and edit my canines configuration file in the canines home directory, you'll see there's a new feature flag or a new attribute as part of the uh, global configuration and that guy is called enable image care. That guy is disabled by default. So in order to see the feature, you actually have to opt in uh, on this because we weren't sure it's still a preview feature. So in case things break badly, uh, you can back this out. Uh, but let's go for the purpose of this video. Let's go and say, yes, please enable this feature, save the file, and let's go look at K9s now. All right. So as Business as usual, I'm looking at part view here, and you can see uh, there's a new column, a variable called VS uh, right here, and VS stands for vulner Vulnerability Score. This is currently uh, represented as a bit vector, uh, so there's you know, six bits here that you can see. So I opted for this visualization for the get-go. I spent all of my Thanksgiving break on this, it was late at night. That's the best I could come up with. So I'm open to uh, ideas or, or opinions on this. But uh, in essence, the bit vector here represents various levels of severity as part of the scan. So the first five bits represent SEV1, the most critical, to SEV5, the least critical. And then the last bit, one, means that there is, we don't really know, it's not in our database, the scan reported that there are unknown severities, but they are not in our database, so they are not classified. So when you see that bit going high, it probably would be a good idea to further investigate to make sure what kind of uh, severity that is and see whether or you should address it in your cluster. So typically, we wanted to get a visual cue. You're going to have uh, many pods here. You can sort. That's the new action available on this view uh, using Shift-V, sort ascending, descending on that big vector. And the idea is now you have a, a line of sight, if you will, uh, at least on the three first bits, you know, the, the most critical high and medium severity bits uh, where you can assess whether you want to look at this further investigate what the issues could be. So that's great. Now you get a visual indicator, but you know, that doesn't tell you the whole story. You don't just know that there are presence of those severities in your cluster. You want to be able to view it. So in order to do that, you uh, select uh, the pod that you're interested in and then press V again, a new action in pod view. And then here you see the full report of the result of the scan. So in this case here, you can see there's 109 severities you know, detected on that particular image, which is, I think, NGINX. Um, and then you can see it's sorted by severity going from 1 to 5 to unknown, right? So, you know, if I reverse the order here using Shift S, you can see Sev U is unknown. So there is a CVE affiliated with that, but the database that we currently have doesn't have any severity report on it. So you'll have to investigate uh, on that end. All right. So then we have abilities to sort on library using Shift L to see the various libraries. And here, the scans are currently only ran on your pod container. So a collection of containers uh, available on the main container for the pod, right? So you may have several images there and we get scans for those. Currently, we are not scanning yet, or if I have impetus to do so, I will enable it. But the init containers, ephemeral containers or debug containers currently are not part of the scans. I figured might as well concentrate on what's actually running on the cluster. But, you know, again, I think it may make sense for us to enhance those scans to other containers as well. 
Then he, there is the library, the version, and then the interesting column here is the fixed in, right? So you can shift F to sort on that column. And you can see here that uh, a lot of them, sadly, the save one is no fix. So that's not very good news. But if I scroll down here, you can see, for example, TF, there is a CVE uh, affiliated with it. And there is a fix on an upgrade, you know, on the revision of that dependency, which is good to know. But also you'll be aware that, you know, dependency management is hard, right? So you may think that uh, we, uh, you want to eliminate, you know, the CF3, for, for example, but that could also entail other things that may break your app by just updating those dependencies. So, you know, it's always a tug war here, making sure you are clean, but also, you know, how, how, how much pain you want to endure updating dependencies that may break other part of your application. So be aware of that. Okay, so this is pretty good. So if I go back up here uh, on that report, and I want to actually further look at what that save one is about. So we know we have a CVE here, you know, recorded with that severity on the Zlib library. So now part of the workflow is you can press, and you can see here in my browser window, we actually get to see part of the database, the full detail of what that severity implies, what are the, the use cases for that, and also looking at the, the actual score here that has been recorded. So in this case, this is highest uh, severity, so probably something that is worth looking at in the cluster. Okay, so this is great. Again, here in the pod view, you can see I have your pod managed by deployment, and then I've got uh, two stateful, uh, stateful set that manage those two pods, right? So if we look at the stateful set view, again, no surprise here, right? Anything that manages pods and therefore containers will have that VS column affiliated with it. So deployment, stateful set, daemon set, jobs, cron jobs, all will fall within the features set that I showed you with the pod. So in this case here, we have the VS column. No surprise there, the bit vector is exactly the same as the pod that it manages, right? So again, you know, same capabilities. I can, you know, view the report. I can pick a severity. I can see it in the, the actual database and look at the more uh, information about that uh, CVE. And likewise, for example, I can go to cron jobs. I don't have any. Let's see, Fred cron job doesn't have any either. So let's populate a cron job here. I think I got a sample one. And you can see here this view and any other views is eventually consistent, right? When we are looking at pods or managers of pods, we eventually kick in async those scans. So those vulnerability scores are going to keep updating, right? So uh, again, in good old canines fashion, we'll have the delta indicator that shows you that that column change and when the dust settle, you can actually look at the report. Again, the report is also async. So if I, sorry, if I'm in the right window and I view this report here, you can actually see, sorry, you can actually see that this is a different bit flag, right? In this case, the three most significant bits are set high. So therefore, there's three severities at stake here. And when I view the report, no surprises, right? Save one to save three. And then once again here on that, sadly, on that uh, busy box image, uh, there's no fix for you. So you kind of like out of luck on that. Anyway, I think that's all I wanted to show you guys. I hope you find this uh, feature useful. There's a few things I should mention as part of this uh, presentation is one, uh, Windows users, you're not going to be too happy with me. The library that we're currently using only supports OS X and Linux. So hopefully it's enhanced their offerings so that, you know, Windows users are not left out. So that's one thing that I want to mention. So if you're on Windows, this feature just won't work. Also, when you look at those reports, this is an open source library that we're using. So mileage will vary, given especially that they do offer a paid uh, subscription for that uh, feature. You probably want to make sure, you know, take those reports with a grain of salt, ensure, you know, that this is really what's going on before you go out and update your cluster. So just a, a little bit of a word of warning here uh, when you're looking at those reports. Again, this is brand new. The paint is still fresh on this. I just want to make sure you guys feel free to report issues on the repo. If 
melee. We don't want to cry wolf when we don't need to or do cry wolf when we do need to, right? So I want to make sure that we don't get any false positive or anything like that. Right now I'm looking for the accuracy aspect of this feature. I have tested it on several clusters. I've not tested it on anything big. So there could be also some performance issues lurking with this feature. No surprises there, and we'll address them based on your comments and feedback. So thank you for, thank you for that. All right, I'll leave it here. I'm trying to keep this short. I do want to make sure that, you know, if you enjoy K9 and you feel there's a productivity boost here, I just want to make sure that you do consider contributing to the project and the sponsorship program, right? I mean, don't assume somebody else is going to do it for you. Uh, as I can vouch for this, it's not the case. So, you know, again, for this tool to keep bringing on features, keep uh, evolving, keep improving, and keep bringing value to your daily workflow with Kubernetes. And if that makes a difference, believe me, it does. So please make sure you, you keep that in mind. All right, that's all I have. Thank you very much for listening. I'll catch you on the next episode and have a great rest of the week. Thank you.